Here's the thing. A lot of people online that you've seen already on social media and everywhere else are likely raving about how freelancing is all awesome. You can make a lot of money. It gives you a lot of freedom. You can work from home. You can work from anywhere. You can work from Wi-Fi. Almost seems like an MLM pitch. I'm not in a pyramid scheme. As a freelancer, you get to work from virtually anywhere. And that's great. That being said, uh, I see a lot of people fail to mention even the other side. Let's pull up the curtain a little bit, all right? And let's have just a cozy chat about the not so Instagrammable side of freelancing, shall we? I have my notes here. You have your coffee, hopefully. I was gonna go with a coffee chat vibe, but I drank all my coffee. So we're just gonna have the coziness. Hope you like it. So the first thing I want to mention is that it's not easy money. I mean, is anything actually easy money? I don't know. But I can almost guarantee you that you won't start today and make real good money like tomorrow. It can take days. It can take weeks. It can take months. It may even take years. It all depends on the effort you put in, how much you've learned beforehand. That being said, it will become much, much easier the more you do it. That first client is truly the hardest one to get. I swear to you, the second will be much easier because you get to see what worked there for you to get that client. And it just makes you more trustable, but also makes you more confident in yourself and in your skills which may seem like a small thing, but it will show. When you're talking to the client, you'll be that much more confident and assertive. Now, because it's not easy money, like we just talked about, you need to really want it. So you'll put in the needed effort. It's not just, oh, I want it. I'll get it. If you don't believe it's possible, maybe you just want it for the money or for the vibes. I can... 110% guarantee you that you won't get it. You'll just be wasting your time. Because like I said, it takes effort. It takes wanting to learn, wanting to improve. And all this is even before you see any results. So if you don't want it hard enough, it will be easy to just let it go. And that's totally fine. If it's not your dream, if it's not your goal, not everyone's meant to be a freelancer. But if you know that you really want to make this work when things get rough or when you get uninspired and down on yourself just remember what made you want to become a freelancer like why did you start this let's talk about a positive because not everything's negative the good news is you can do virtually anything and turn any passion you have into a service i can almost bet you and we can do a little game down in the comments just comment what your skills or what your hobbies are and let's see if we can make it into a service idea together and feel free to also respond to other people's comments give them service ideas that would be the coolest now another thing a lot of people don't talk about i mean they talk about half of it is the money aspect now you've likely seen a lot of people just gloat about their 10k, 20k, 30k months. Don't get me wrong, I've done a couple of videos like that in the past, just showing what I made in a given month. But I feel like I try to approach those as showing you what's possible. Because back in the day when I started, I was just limited to think that because I'm from Portugal, Hi, if you don't know, I'm in Portugal because minimum wage here is a joke. I couldn't charge high rates. And I know I've talked to people in India and other countries that also have the same mentality. Like people around me are not making money, so I shouldn't be making money or I would be greedy if I was asking for that type of money. I charged $5 an hour for a couple of years, I believe. And granted, I was doing that on a side of my studies. I wasn't really taking freelancing seriously. But imagine the amount of money that I lost on just because I didn't know what other people were charging, what other people were making in this industry. That being said, we do have those great ass months. But I'll also let you in on a little secret. Not everyone's going to be the same. It can be, especially if you have a regular service that clients come back to you every month, like for example, social media management, but it's 
totally normal for any kind of business and freelancing is a business to have high months and low months last year my months ranged from i believe the lowest was like a thousand five hundred and the highest was like six seven k which meant i had super happy moments and moments where i thought what the hell am i doing <laughs> i'm poor that being said when the year came to an end and I did the math, it evened out at about 3k a month. Could I have made more? Yes. But seeing that I worked very small hours, I had a lot of free time to work on other projects that I wanted to do for the longest time. It's good. It gets more than good. All that to say that obviously, if you do have a job right now, don't let people online influence you into just quitting and jumping straight into freelancing. I mean, you can, of course. I'm not the boss of you. I'm not your mom. But I wouldn't recommend it. Also, tracking your income each month is definitely a good idea. Tracking where it came from so you can see what services are the most profitable. And also so you can see like trend patterns. I tend to see that for me, summers are slower. And then Q4, everyone needs me suddenly. And I regret complaining that I didn't have work throughout the summer. So for me, that's great news. It means more time by the beach. It means I get to always take my birthday off. As you can tell, I was overheating. My camera was overheating. So, But lastly, it gets lonely. I touched on this a little bit last week. I guess if you didn't see it, I'll link it right here. But I'm an introvert. I'm totally cool with just sitting here by myself all day, every day with my cats. Sometimes they make an appearance and I'm cool with just doing that and being productive. But it's a little bit too much. There can be too much of a good thing. And that's also why I tend to travel so much, because I like to see people i like to see new things new sceneries i could just go for a walk i could go out to lisbon or something closer but i like travel sue me one of my favorite ways apart from traveling to combat that is to do co-working sessions with my online friends and most of my friends are online which i'll leave it up to you to decide whether or not that's lame but i do have co-working sessions that i join in every single week where we just talk about what we're doing, what we've been working on, where we work together for a little bit. By the way, also a little plug here, I created a Discord server for that um, particular purpose for us to all join in together. It has a chat room where we can chat about stuff. You can ask me questions, but it also has a co-working room. You can join in at any time, either by yourself or with a friend or with myself. And it has a Pomodoro timer. so. That's why you can also join by yourself. If you're interested in joining, why not? It's free. I'll have the link for that down below. Come join in, say hi. And of course, on that note, you can also join uh, co-working spaces that are nearby you. You can also work at cafes, at parks, if you have access to Wi-Fi or if you can use data. Just work outside of home. Sometimes it's fun and you get to, to leave your house, which let's let's be honest, is healthy. That's kind of what people don't tell you about freelancing. I'll see you next time.